right. I would, I would do the fancy backgrounds like you guys have there, but um, every time I try it, all it does is pick up my microphone and this weird thing here. So it's just, uh -huh. it's confusing. I, I was going to put up black and white just for you, Cole, instead of... Uh, you know, color in this what, century. Yeah, but why, why, why are you always having to like be like nice to Cole? Why couldn't you put a color picture up because of me? He's I, never why, nice why, to why me. Never why nice do you always want to please Cole? I don't get that. No, no it's what always it, John, uh, John, John. I got clowns to the left of me and jokers to the right. I guess in this instance, it's below. <laughs> All right, so. little musical reference here. We yeah. go. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. So everybody, welcome to the Jason Eldridge photo show. This is a little bit different. I would introduce who we have here, but I'm very lazy. So I'm not going to do that. We'll start with, uh, just for his ego's sake, we'll start with Cole. Why don't you tell the folks a just a little bit about yourself? We don't want to hear too much. Like, okay, you're uh, done. Okay, my hi, I'm, John, I'm John Barclay and I'm totally <laughs> insecure. Sorry. <laughs> I'm Cole. I'm a black and white photographer. Okay. Wow. Excellent. Extraordinarily. <laughs> that's a that surprised me. Wow. I'm John. <laughs> <laughs> I win. I win. Mine was wow. shorter. No. I'm John. I'm a I'm an everything photographer. I like black and white and I like Cole's work, surprisingly, but uh and I but I also photograph in color. I'm primarily, I think, a landscape photographer, although I got rid of that moniker and just call myself a photographer at this point. Right. Cole would say not a very good one, but I, I'm working on that part of it. <laughs> Didn't need to say it. <laughs> yeah, you knew I would. <laughs> so if if you've watched the, the show in the past here, I've mentioned the Cole and John photo show. I kind of want to know why it's Cole and right. John and not John and Cole, but I I tend to to talk about you guys quite a bit on the show. And I, it's a lot because when I watch your show, it makes me think it's not the same stuff that I hear over and over and over. And I don't like some of the things you say because it makes me think and it makes me question <laughs> what I've done because I've been doing this for a long time. And now because of you, I, I have to stop and think, well, maybe my mindset was not correct or maybe it's a different way to look at it. And so I love your show and the way you do it. And so I started stalking them on YouTube, like really bad. So every single episode I make a comment and uh, I guess they, they finally just gave in and, and invited themselves on the show. <laughs> and, and so here we are. And I don't know, I, I, it, it was really nice to have you guys on and I love to watch your show. I love what you talk about. I love the fact that you don't agree with each other. And I mean, I, I rarely, rarely agree with cole but that <laughs> gummit every time he makes me think and i think over and over and over and it turns out he's right a lot and i don't like that about cole but you know it is what it is so thank you both for coming on the show you're welcome, we're only on the show to steal all your leads because you know people may not know that about our show but we've almost broken the internet it's gotten so big that i don't think the bandwidth is sufficient to yep. carry our message to everybody. I think we're up to almost 800. Unbelievable. Yeah, right, 800 viewers. Do the Kardashians have 800 yet? I, I don't, I don't think so. the Kardashians are anywhere and near Taylor 800. Taylor Swift, she wishes she, she had our She wishes power. she had 800 followers. Jeez. Well, I, I'm glad that you're on because I might pick up a couple from you. So well, <laughs> you know, maybe we'll, we'll benefit here. From, from each other. But you know what? I like what you're doing too on your channel. And I do follow you, Jason. You 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 present exceedingly well. You're doing some great content, so and we well, do appreciate your comments. Uh, um, and we have, and you know your feedback is excellent. Mm -hmm. That's all Cole and I really want to do. We we don't ever want to make it a polished show. We just want to be two guys chit chatting about what we're passionate about. And as you know, on our channel, we we really are passionate about the process of how you show up. Um, you know, vision driven photography, uh, making photographs that make your heart sing, as I want to say, or expressive photography. You know, those are those are the topics that we like to chew on in a little bit. And you're right. Sometimes we don't agree. Oftentimes we do. But if we can just get people to think a little bit, you know, a little deeper about this thing 
called photography, then we're pretty happy. So, so what do you want to talk about today? Well, it actually came from your, your show and one of the comments that I made, and it's something I've been thinking about for a while. In fact, my most recent video was about grumpy people coming on and just being grumpy. And so that got me to thinking is why, why is it that the grumpy people are the ones that get all the attention? And yeah. seeing it on your your show and then even in sometimes in your comments is why is it that you'll have a hundred people? Because you know, we both have hundreds of comments on our shows, yes, right? Hundreds, yeah. Yeah. So why do, with hundreds of comments, they're all positive except for one person that wants to get on. They've got a gripe. They're just having a bad day. They just want to lash out. And they'll make some little offhanded comment or some detailed comment about how you're wrong or how I'm wrong or how my photography is terrible or your videos are terrible. And we suddenly just ignore those 99. So we got 99 people out there that love what we do and they yeah. want to come back for more. And we got one person that doesn't like us and that's what we focus on. And oh, I've yeah. been wondering that for years, you know, uh, being in the camera club and doing camera club stuff, you'll do critiques. You'll have everybody there. Oh, wonderful photos love it it's great uh, you know i had one a person that i respect tell me that my work was derivative that it was just like everybody else's work and he, he was trying to be constructive and helpful and to some extent it was when i started thinking about it but at the same time it's that one comment that i was focused on and i just forgot about all the other praise so it kind of made me think maybe we need a a video or an episode about how or i suggested that you guys do the episode about how to deal with the that negative aspect that we all tend to focus on and then you you hijacked my show and now you're on here getting some of my followers to talk about grumpy people <laughs> and uh the negative and why we focus on that you know i i'm gonna lead cole here a little bit because <laughs> i think he's got a story uh, for your viewers, Jason, and for ours, hopefully, that we'll get to watch your show now, too. Because um, you're right, we do tend to focus on the negative, and it really can get under our skin. But Cole, I think it, this would be a really good opportunity for you to share that experience when you went to, to Santa Fe, because mm -hmm. you talk about a negative experience, you know, one that was that got you, I mean, angry, I think, to some degree, I mean, really did not settle well. And I think that that'll kick off this discussion quite nicely. Yeah, that, that, can, all, all, that can almost open up another discussion, but I'll tell it. Um, I had gone to review Santa Fe, and that's simply where you take your work and show it to experts and gallery owners and all kinds of people in the field hoping to be discovered. And I got to the last reviewer of the day, and he looked at my work very briefly, brusquely pushed it back and said, it looks like you're trying to copy Ansel Adams. And I said, proudly, I am. I love Ansel Adams. And then he said something that I say not just changed my photography, but it changed my life because it, it's a whole life outlook. He said, Ansel already did Ansel. What can you do that exhibits your unique vision? Mm. And that set me forth on this journey that changed me from photographer to fine art photographer. We hate the phrase, but people get it. And, uh, but he said it in a negative way. And it really, it rankled me for a very long time, how he delivered the message. And I look back and I wonder if he would have delivered it a little more gently. Would I have heard it sooner? I don't know. Um, we just don't like negative comments. Uh, that one turned out to be something that turned into a positive, but, uh, your question, I, I can relate to it so much. Uh, when I'm giving a presentation and I see a room of people, I'm only focused on that one person who gives me the frown like they don't agree yeah. with what I'm saying. That's why I'm so upset in John, the Cole and John show, because John's always giving me the, I don't agree with you look, and, <laughs> and it just drives me crazy. Um, but I do, you know, it is curious, and we've all talked about it previous. Why do we focus on the one out of 100 comments? What does that say? I don't think we need to look at the person and why they're negative. We need to look at ourselves and ask, one, why does it bother us? And two, how do you insulate yourself from that? Yeah. 
Yeah, right. no, I, I think I think you're right, Cole. Uh, because I can totally relate when when I was doing all the lectures live, you really do that one person yes. who they're sitting there with their arms crossed and they're kind of giving you that glance. But then you have oh thanks, Jason. Yeah, appreciate that. But then you have, you know, in that same thing, you've got another group over here that are in tears sometimes because they're so moved by a comment that you've made. And I can't stick with them. i I'm I'm really worried. That the, yeah. you know, Mr. Grump a lot of us over there, you know, <laughs> who's got his arms crossed and shaking his head, you know, or, or raises their hand at the end of it and says, why would you ever practice photographic celibacy? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, right? <laughs> Which I was at a lecture one time with when Cole was giving it. But, you know, I, I'll start the answer. I think it's somewhat human. I mean, I, I think you know at the old and we're old compared to you jason and we've so we've little lived a little bit longer you know it really is human i mean we want to you know it goes back to our childhood we want to please our parents we want to please mm -hmm. the teacher we want you know we always are trying to please and so i know for me i that that's where my struggles come from is always trying to make sure people like me you know that right. i'm doing a good job and it's acceptable and so, boy, that one person stands out. I'm not a psychologist, but I got to believe that there's something in there and that as a human being, if we're not being liked at that moment, it's uncomfortable. Well, I think the more confident we are, we're talking about our work, yeah. the more confident we are in our work and in our vision of what we're doing the less we care what others think. And I, that's what I experienced. When I was a photographer for 35 years, I was really in the business of pleasing others, getting more likes, getting more business, getting more sales, getting more publications. It was always about getting external praise or sales or acceptance. When you finally find your vision and you know what you want, then when you hear others criticize it, you realize, one, they're coming from it from their vision, not your vision. Mm -hmm. And you don't want their vision. Hmm. For years, I was told things like, don't center the subject and open up my shadows. Until I realized that's how I see, that's how I want the image to be. They may like open shadows and non-centered rule of third subjects, but it's my image. Now, do I suffer a smaller audience because of my eclectic taste? Sure. Yeah. But I would rather please me and be unpopular mm -hmm. than be tremendously popular by pleasing others. Yeah. So it comes really back to confidence. And why are you creating? What are you trying to get out of it? If you're trying to get out of popularity, then, you know, you're going to suffer some highs and lows. That's the life. Yeah. And so, so Jason, I think that applies then, right, to your content as well that you're producing. Um, as long as you feel like you're producing content on your show, that's the best you can produce. And that's meeting a need that you see that needs to be met. That really should be good enough. I mean, that vision for your photography, I, as Cole's talking about, can also apply to whatever, you know, and in this case, you know, our, each of our respective shows, we're doing the best we can. Right. And to... for me, the show has gone through what few videos that I've got. It's gone through a change just since I started doing it because initially it was, well, how can I gain an audience? And now it's more of how can I go do photography and have people come along with me and just see how I do it and forget about all of the, oh, you have to have this in your show and you've got to have this and you've got to have catchy titles and thumbnails that are wonderful to grab attention you know what, I, I just want to go take photos and have people come along with me. That's really, really what I want to do. And I want to talk about photography and that's going to change. It'll change as my mindset and my vision. That's a new word that I learned this year. Um, my vision changes because it will with my life experience. Then so will my YouTube channel. So will my photography, yeah. you know, and yeah. for so many years, I was so focused on, oh, I've got to have the rule of thirds and the rule of odds and yeah, you know, nothing in the center and forget the horizon line in the middle and watch out, make sure it's yeah, not crooked. Yeah. So I had a lot of photos that were, I mean, it followed those rules. 
but yeah. they did they didn't make me happy but they followed the rules yeah. so that's changed a bit over the years too to where I don't worry about that. I just compose the image the way that I like it, the way it looks, and I'm happy right. with it. Now, when someone comes on and they don't like something I've done, then I start questioning myself, which maybe all of us as creatives, we tend to do that. That's not always a bad thing that no. they to question yourself, but you have to take the good and just brush off the rest. You know, if, if it's something that, yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, I agree with what that individual said, then that's something I can pursue. And if it's uh, just somebody that had a bad day that's trying to make your day a little worse, then you, you just got to ignore those. And I struggle with doing that. So we're well, trying to get internet, better. The internet does bring out the worst in Ugh. some people. And it's very unfortunate um, it that we can be so uncivil because we are behind a firewall, you know, and yeah. it's just a terrible thing. And I guess that the best we can do, we can try to ignore it, but maybe we also discourage those types of people from, you know, we don't want to associate with people who are like that. So maybe on a show such as ours, and we have someone who's behaving poorly, we ask them to leave or. Yeah. Know. Yeah. We don't, we don't need that kind of negativity um, in, in photography. That's what I said on, on my, my show recently is we just, we don't need it. We have enough of that in real life in the world. We don't need it here too. So well, especially in landscape photography, that it, Jason, that blows my mind. Yeah. I mean, I think most of us who are landscape photographers or fine art photographers or black and white, you know, this genre that we are part of, we do it because it brings us so much joy, right? We're, right. we're doing it to escape That's right. all that stuff. I mean, I love being out on my own. I do. I want to go back to something you said earlier, because you're right. You shouldn't follow all those rules. But there is one rule that Cole and I have learned with our vast YouTube experience and the <laughs> millions of viewers that we have is that if you're going to be successful on the type of show you're doing, you should always do like the three things or the, the 10 best or the one. Yeah. So make sure do that. And I promise you, you're going to be uber successful. Like the three best Lightroom tricks you could ever learn. You know, that's a good one. Right. You could do, you could do like the, the single best camera setting ever i mean that's a good title or like this one would be the two worst photographers that i can think of <laughs> have them on your show to make you look better that's right that's, that's perfect thank you for that by the way perfect yeah there's like a million that. tips for shows there's a million tips for photography but again why are we doing it yeah uh, right. we do the show because we have fun doing it and we know we could do a better job by having catchy titles by having more frequent content blah blah yeah. blah yeah but that's Scripts what we're doing it for yeah. yeah we're not trying to build anything other than just have fun yeah yeah that's that's actually where i'm at right now with youtube that i think i would do this even if i didn't get any followers just because it's fun of course i want followers i want people to interact with and to talk to and all of that stuff but I enjoy doing what I'm doing. I enjoy, if I never make anything from photography, I'm still going to go. Yeah. Uh, so that none of that matters to me anymore. I just want to go take photos. So, hey, back. let's go backwards again. So we've been talking about how, you know, that one negative. Mm -hmm. So what about praise? I mean, mm -hmm. is there anything, you know, so if we only follow the hundred that love us, and only do what they want is there some concern there i would think so i would think that then you would start your photography might turn in that direction because we all want that praise i want people to love my work i want them to love these videos i want all of that and so the more that people like on a video that i do somewhere in my subconscious at the very least it's going to encourage yeah. me to make those videos and yeah. Uh, so yeah i think there's definitely a negative to always thinking of the positive. Sure. Uh, it's just something to be mindful of, I think, right? right? Uh, I think there's a caution that we, we've we spoken about on our show that, some, uh, uh, Cole, what was your, you have a little catchphrase for praise? Oh, it's an addictive drug. It can be an addictive drug. Yeah. You know, and it can make you do that. It can make you say, okay, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep doing that. And And the example that I think we spoke about was you have a, a grandchild like I do here in my home 
and you know they come up to you and they draw something and you go wow that's a great drawing that's that's phenomenal i mean and they go back and they do that drawing again rather than saying man that's so creative i can't wait to see what your next creation is right i'm gonna pick up that one quote that i think oh. really you guys keep talking i'll find yeah. it <laughs> so so anyways I, I just wanted to make sure that in this discussion yeah yeah we get frustrated with that grump a lot of us person you know who just feels like they're having a bad day and you know causes us to get our underwear in a knot you know but at the same time you know just chasing after likes all the time is not going to make your content or your photography better Right. You know, and, and going back to what Cole said, I agree. So because I think you initially said, Jason, you want to say, how do we overcome that? The more confident that we are, that we are producing work that meets our vision, that's coming from our our souls, if you will. And it's and we are slathered all over our work, whether it be your content or our content or the photographs that we're making that's what's going to shine through. And that's what differentiates you from being a derivative photographer that someone's talking to you about. You know, I think we've all fallen into that. Cole doesn't. I mean, he really does a great job of not being derivative. Um, but it's easy to do it's because of that. Oh, hey, that's great. I like that. Well, I'm going to keep doing that rather than trying to express ourselves a little more deeply. Cole, do you, do you have that now? I can't find it. Who's that lady artist painter who married Steiglitz? Um, uh, the flower Oral. gal, right? Yeah. Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe. Let me see if I can find yeah. her. Such yeah. a great quote. Uh, I guess yeah. I'll just summarize it. She said she'd already decided it for herself, her own thinking. And so praise and criticism goes down the same drain. And I think that's the approach we need to have. Sure, we love to receive a positive comment, but we have to be always vigilant and not letting it go to our head, not letting it turn our head and just saying, you know, that that is well, wonderful. I, I'm glad that those people appreciate my work, but it's just, they happen to like it. And there's, you know, out of 7 billion people, believe me, there's, I know it'll be hard to believe, but there's more people in the world who don't like my work than do. Right. But as Brooks Jensen says, we find our out our audience and it may be small because we are choosing to follow our vision. Now, if we want to be Peter Lick knockoff, so we can enlarge that uh, audience. But you got to sell a little piece of your soul to do that. Yeah. And uh, that circles yeah. all the way back to why are you doing this? Why are yeah. you choosing to pick up a camera and make photographs and there's no right or wrong answer to that so the people who want to make a yeah. living at it and own a gallery and have gallery images like our friend josh cripps and josh would admit he's gonna have to make images the sell because yeah. it's part right. of how he makes the mortgage payment and well, that's, that's what a, he wants to an, do so yeah, and that's an okay answer there's right. nothing wrong with that but if you want to be an expressive photographer it's going to be hard to make money number one you know uh but it's a lot more fun man making images that make my heart sing and then not worrying the key is not worrying about what anybody else thinks about them yeah. i'm going to still and it take some to training yeah take some training because no matter what as you said john we're human and criticism stings but you yeah. get better and better at it. it you really do and i think it's easier with age because you realize oh. When people criticize what they're they're not really saying your work's bad they're just here's what they're saying i don't like it yeah right and that's okay and that's okay and yeah. it's totally okay it's just like when i look at some abstract art in a museum i'm like going i don't get it i don't get how it. many times have we gone to a photo exhibit and think oh my god really yeah it didn't mean yes. it was bad it just yeah. mean that it wasn't my thing and that's there is no good art or bad art there's only different art Yep. Yeah, you know, I so Clyde Butcher, I'm sure you're familiar with him. He's sure. he's down close to where I'm at. He's got galleries down here. And I went in to one of his galleries and I'm walking around and he makes prints that are just huge. huge. And the process and all of that's amazing. But I was looking at one of them and I was I don't like this picture at all. I don't like this image at all. But, you know, it's huge. And I had the price tag of thirty three thousand dollars on it and he'll sell them. You know, and it's okay that I don't like it. It doesn't yeah. make him less of a photographer or me a better one. So, correct. My hero is Edward Weston. 
I would say I like 10% of Edward Weston's images, yeah. but I love his attitude, his philosophies, and the things that he wrote about in his journal, the day books. And I'm reading them again. To, I try to read them once a year. They just inspire me. And there are images of his that are just out of this world. But 90%, eh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've beat this dead horse. Um, I really, I really appreciate the one of you for coming on. The other one, <laughs> no, I'll now let you guys figure out, out what that one. is. <laughs> but, no, I, I really appreciate both of you being on and taking the time and, and inviting yourself on my show. So I <laughs> thank you very much for that. And, Thanks, Jason. Uh, I, I'll let you guys have some time back and uh, we'll say good night. So. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks All for right. having us on, Jason. You take care. Take care. Bye bye now.